This is QTV News. I am Maria Tusidibe and thanks for joining us. Coming up, Banjul International Airport reopens. Technical fault grounds plane on runway. Government private sector pre-budget consultation held. GCCI bus calls for transparent tax payments. First program on youth launched. NACOF 2017 Action Plan Report Reviewed. For more on this and other stories coming up, stay tuned. Banjul International Airport was shut down on Tuesday. A flight was grounded on the runway after developing a technical fault just before takeoff, according to airport authorities. Babukar Sise reports. This is the aircraft that caused the Banjul International Airport closure for 22 hours beginning at around 5 p.m. on Tuesday. Enter Air is a police flight operated by the Gambia Experience. According to Ablai Jame, Director General of Gambia Civil Aviation Authority, it is common for an aircraft to get stuck on the runway, but this is the first time it happened in the Gambia. The police flight in question, he said, developed a technical error before takeoff. Specifically what happened uh, was that uh, an anti-air flight operated on behalf of uh, Gambia Experience was uh, taking off to London, was on a takeoff roll, and they had some warnings uh, uh, in the cockpit that uh, there was a configuration malfunction and therefore the advice was to abort the flight. But remember the flight was almost rolling to V1, meaning takeoff point. So it had to apply the auto brakes and uh, the braking action itself is what actually caused the seizure in the braking system itself. And uh, we had to disembark the passengers, allowed the uh, braking or the gears to cool down. And then, of course, the fuel, because the plane was fully loaded with fuel at the time, the fuel, and then attempt to release the brakes. While efforts were being made to remove the aircraft, inbound flights were diverted to a neighboring country. The Director General of Gambia Civil Aviation Authority says the loss of income is minimal. Well, uh, only a couple, but they were diverted to Senegal, and that's fairly normal, really, because in aviation, Airlines do have their own alternate aerodromes. In case of uh, situations like this, if for any reason your destination airport is not available, uh, you can divert to another airport. And I think it's not more than, I mean, the real schedule that was supposed to come is uh, uh, two of them really. So it's not a major loss. We've not quantified it, but it's not, it's not really a major loss. The authorities were able to move the aeroplane to a safer location and restore normal services. Catherine Ying, Deputy Director General of Gambia Civil Aviation Authority, says the airport is now open and business is in progress. It's been a nightmare, and especially when you have wrong information going around. But again, like the DG said, we just want to assure everyone that the airport is open, operations have started, there's already a flight that landed and we move on from here. The pilot made a wise decision aborting the flight when he noticed the technical problem and the Gambia Civil Aviation Authority equally sensibly shutting down the runway. If these procedures had been ignored, perhaps we will be here telling you a completely different story. Babakar Sise, QTV News. The president of GCCI, Idrissa Masjoub, wants government to ensure that tax payment is uniform and transparent. He made this suggestion at the start of a pre-budget consultation organized by the Ministry of Finance and Economic Affairs with members of the private sector. Alusisi reports. The 2020 pre-budget consultation is seen as an important part of the budgetary process. It gives the government the opportunity to hear firsthand what is most important to the private sector in the 2020 budget. Organizers say the workshop will be used as a platform to discuss budget policy matters, including overall medium term macroeconomic framework. Idrissa Mas Job, president of the Gambia Chamber of Commerce and Industry, said the private sector is a critical partner to government. Mr. Job said the concerns of the private sector in relation to government's budget policy. We believe that there is a lot of, <coughs> lot of shrinkage at the level of tax and today 
as part of demonstration of our commitment to the partnership in development, we are saying that the application of taxes must be more, more transparent, that we want both the communities, those are the NGOs, uh, business, GCCI, and the government collectively to ensure that the payment of tax is uniform. And the only way you can do this is increase transparency. We have noticed a lot of transparency at the le level of the budget unit of the Ministry of Finance. So we expect to see this transparency also translate into the collection of taxes. We In the expenditure of taxes, Job said the issue of single sourcing by government's institutions is distorting competition. He wants to see a fair share of the cake in the participation of government standards. There are lots of businesses that are registered in the Gambia and they are not usually given the opportunity to participate in uh, government tenders. So we are saying we want to call business, the community and the government. We want to call for some type of oversight of the government procurement system. We know that the rules exist. We know that at the government level, the oversight exists at the executive level. But as businesses, I mean, it's a show me world. It's not a trust me world. All of us, like in the collection of tax, we want also to be convinced that in the expenditure of the budget, um, it is as, as transparent. So this is also something that the business community has been very concerned, concerned with. Mot Kesise, Permanent Secretary, Minister of Trade, said the Trade and Industrial Policy Direction is geared towards transforming the Gambian economy by creating a business environment supportive of business and private sector development. The Trade and Industrial Policy Direction of Government is therefore geared towards transforming the Gambian economy through business environment reform supportive of businesses and private sector development. Major contributor to the financing of the National Development Plan, we will all agree, is the investor and the corporate citizens. Mot A.K. Seka, Permanent Secretary, Minister of Finance and Economic Affairs, states the impact of the private sector in the socio-economic growth of any country. Our role as government is simply to facilitate a conducive environment for the private sector to thrive. Private sector activities can play an integral role in job creation and entrepreneurial opportunities, enable technology transfer, build human capital and fiscal infrastructure, generate public revenue for government. From our perspective, we are committed to create an enabling environment, especially in the areas of energy, infrastructure, human capital development, and tax reforms. This consultation comes at a time when a private company, Gulbrew, is faced with imminent closure due to high tax imposed by the government in its 2019 budget. The company has laid off many staff ahead of a possible permanent closure. Reporting for QTV News, I am Aliou Sisset. The Gambia National Youth Council Thursday launched the first Gambia program of action on youth at a ceremony held at Karababich Hotel. QTV's Maria Tussar tells us more. Following the success of the 12th National Youth Conference and Festival, NACOF in 2017 graced by 2,000 youth across the country, the theme was New Gambia, Challenges and Opportunities for the Youth. The Gambia National Youth Council adopted the conference resolution in line with the country, regional and international development framework. The Gambia National Youth Council, with support from the UNFPA, decided to formulate the first coherent and implementable Gambian program of action on youth to serve as a guide to the government. The representative of the UNFPA, the Gambia, Kunle Adeni, gave a statement emphasizing on the need to approach the issues of young people in a holistic manner. But the simple fact is that all these areas are very important. But young people cannot be boxed into one area, into one specific thing, youth in agriculture, farmers, young farmers. Until we begin, as a people, to look at the issue of young people in a holistic manner, to understand that young people are human beings, and young people are both students and, and uh, farmers and 
and teachers and um, traders and and to find a platform of say what are the things that are common to young people and how do we need to invest across this spectrum, including their health. That then can we capacitize young people to take up the uh, the role that we want them to take up in this. So, the launching statement, which was read on behalf of the Minister of Youth and Sport, Hadra Mesidibe, says the Gambia Program of Action on Youth, GPAY, is inspirational and symbolic, as it is as a result of the 2017 NACOF. The 2,000 delegates who participated in the conference called on government and other development partners as well as taxed the young people of the country to carry out certain concrete activities grouped under the following eight thematic areas. Youth leadership and political participation, youth employment and entrepreneurship, and gender-based violence and sexual and reproductive health rights of young people. Chairperson, distinguished just ladies and gentlemen, these priority areas, I am certain, do not emerge as a result of as a result of passion for these thematic components. But I am convinced they became significant to young people because of their importance and how crucial they are to the ultimate national development. Lamin Dabo, executive director of the Gambia National Youth Council, explains the stages it took the Youth Council to formulate and launch the program. First, we had to ensure that we are able to mobilize resources to get someone who will put this document together because, you know, neck of resolution are just uh, one, two, three, four recommendations that come from NECON to be put professionally into a document, a framework that should be aligned to the NDP but also aligned to other international development uh, frameworks. You need an expert to, to help you do that. So first we had to work on not only mobilizing resources but also getting someone to do that. When it was done, there were, it had took a process, process of consultations and also validating some figures and collecting data and analysis. We had to also do what we call a validation. It has to be validated. So it is after the validation <coughs> that uh, we plan that we are supposed to have a, a launching. But after the validation, it becomes a living document. And that means it can be implemented and we are implementing the GPA. The launching was followed with a presentation by representatives of various youth organizations. Reporting for QTV News, I am Maria Tussar. A five-year project on impact evaluation of maternal child nutrition and health results project ended on Thursday at Ocean Bay. The project was conducted by the government of the Gambia with technical and financial support from the World Bank. Bubakar Fati has more on the story. A five years project was implemented to increase the operation of community nutrition, primary maternal and child health service in three regions, with some of the poorest performances in the Gambia. The regions were the Upper River Region, Central River Region and North Bank West Region. The three regions currently account for one third of the Gambia's population. Over five years, the project reached approximately 183,000 children under five and 180,000 women aged 15 to 49 years. Indicators of maternal child nutrition and health in the Gambia highlight significant room for improvement. The Gambia ranks 174 out of 179 countries in the modern index. Furthermore, nutrition and health outcome vary strongly between the rural eastern region and urban western region of the Gambia, with the eastern region marking less progress on these indicators. Talking to QTV was the Executive Director of National Nutrition Agency and Project Coordinator, Maudu Cheyasinfal. He emphasizes on the achievement so far in the implementation of the project. That we have achieved a lot in terms of improving maternal and child nutrition optics because that was one of the project development objectives. How do we improve upon the uptake of certain nutrition and health services? Uh, for example, during the period we have improved upon mothers reporting to pregnant women reporting to health facility during the first trimester, that is during the first three months of their pregnancy. Women used to wait until six months or when they are about to deliver to, to, to report to the health facility. Now we change that. Uh, most women, once they discover that they are pregnant, they go to the health facilities and the nurses will look at them and see whether they are having any health problem. Do they have anemia? Do they, are, they, are their weight going? 
going up and down. If it is not going up, you know, they give them some nutritional advices. If they are anemic, they give them iron folic tablets. But at the same time, we also improve upon the clinic attendance of the mothers. Uh, hitherto, mothers would come once in a blue and once in a while, but we were able to make sure that at least they pay three clinic visits. At the same time, we improve upon mothers delivering in the health facilities. Rifat Hassan, representative and senior health specialist of the World Bank, spoke on the support World Bank has been given the Gambia to help it achieve its goals in maternity and child nutrition. We have been with the government in partnership since before 2012 to design and implement the project. The government, uh, in particular the National Nutrition Agency and the Ministry of Health, in partnership have been implementing the project with support from Ministry of Finance. And we've just been here to provide some technical assistance and the financing, but the government uh, has a lot to be proud of in terms of how much they've achieved and how well they've been able to implement the interventions in this project. Alhaji Karamba Keta, Deputy Permanent Secretary, Minister of Health, spoke about the impact the project has brought in the life of the rural people in the Gambia. Minister, uh, this project has actually uh, impacted on the lives of the people of the Gambia, but more importantly through the Minister of Health. One, um, one of our biggest challenging uh, indicators that we were struggling with as a ministry is the skilled delivery of women, uh, or maybe if I may put it like uh, institutional delivery, where we want women, all women, to deliver at health facilities and be aided by, you know, trained health personnel. And this has this project has actually improved on that, you know, uh, greatly. Bawakar Fati reporting for QTV News. In sports. Armed forces blew a chance of securing top spot in the GFF First Division League following a one-all draw with Banjul United. With two matches to go, a win would have seen them overtake current leaders Birkama United. Mumudu Gajaga watched the game on Wednesday night and here is his report. They appeared destined for victory when Samsijan Baj's perfect execution from a free kick gave armed forces the lead. It followed an incident where Basiru Ning brought down Kabiru Juf at the edge of the box. Their goal celebration, however, was short-lived as Mohamed Samba converted a penalty to equalise after the armed forces captain Seku Jata brought down Modulam Ture inside the penalty area. <laughs> From then on, the soldiers controlled the game, showing intense attacking prowess and creating many goal-scoring opportunities. Disappointingly though, none of the chances were converted to goals. A combination of poor finishing, brilliant goalkeeping and steadfastness in defence kept them at bay. Armed Forces second-half substitute Dominic Demba missed the best chance of the game in the 57th minute. He needed only composure to hit the ball at the back of the net, but his shot went wide. The two coaches had their reactions after the game. Well, um, uh, at least we've uh, come out with a point. Um, it's disappointing though. We thought that we could have uh, got the three points, to be honest. But uh, that didn't happen. Uh, again, um, it's, it's a bitter pill to swallow because uh, we thought that <coughs> at least uh, after the goal that we scored, we could have uh, defended that goal. Uh, but it didn't happen. Um, uh, Holistically, we are just going to say that um, we need uh, another six points. When I came, before, before coming to this country, uh, back to this country again anyway, I, I knew that and I learned that um, uh, we don't score that many goals in the league. And uh, the, the, the policy I came with and uh, the tactical discipline I had is since club teams don't score that many goals, we avoid conceding goals. Um, so it's not a surprise to me. Coach Jara urged reporters to talk about the mistakes of stakeholders in the game without being specific. One assumes that he was referring to referees. I am appealing to, to journalists when they watch and uh, analyse. Let them see some of the, the, the mistakes that our players do and other stakeholders on the pitch. Um, what if you say other stakeholders? Can you be specific? No. 
why. So how do you expect us to go? How do you expect us to go on because our platforms? If you, because uh, no, just listen. Allow me. How do you expect us to go on our platforms and and say that and say yeah, let us let us let us observe or let us talk about the mistakes that other stakeholders make? So you have to be specific and tell us because if not, we cannot go on the platform and tell people when you are not being specific here. Because when you watch football, Mr. Jalo, I suppose you are not watching the spectators. Stakeholders involve everybody in this well, case. You have to be special. You should be bold enough as a coach to come to tell us that. Don't 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 try to beat about the bush or circumvent the the, 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 the the truth. You you have to tell us which stakeholders you're talking about. I'm not talking about medics. I'm not talking about journalists. I'm not saying I'm not being specific. Yeah, definitely we are satisfied with the point because before the game we told them we just we need a draw. Draw. Well, One point. To maintain ourselves in the fourth division. That's why when they score, when they score us, and we we come and fight back and equalize. And the second half, we told them not to make any mistake. Try and focus and defense well. You know that they will come play us like long balls. That's why we told them not to take any mistake on our third half. If we do that, they will punish us and score another goal. The draw means armed forces missed a chance to top the table. They remain third with 39 points level with Real de Banjo, but Real has a better goal difference. Bricamo United are leading on 40 points with two matches to go. The title race goes to the wire. Mamudu Gajaga, QTV News. Before we end this bulletin of the news, let's take a quick look at our main stories. Banjo International Airport was shut down on Tuesday. A flight was grounded on the runway after developing a technical fault just before takeoff, according to airport authorities. The president of GCCI, Idrissa Mas Job, wants government to ensure that tax payment is uniform and transparent. He made this suggestion at the start of a pre-budget consultation organized by the Ministry of Finance and Economic Affairs with members of the private sector. The Gambia National Youth Council Thursday launched the first Gambia program of action on youth at a ceremony held at Caraba Hotel. That's all we have for you in this edition of the news. Join us tomorrow for more news. Thank you for watching.